Joe, it's about that time of the year. As the NBA trade deadline approaches, you, you start looking over your shoulder a bit. And in the Western Conference, the Grizzlies, that's the number two seed. You got a lot of teams to look over your shoulder, but the Dallas Mavericks, the biggest move yet, acquiring Kyrie Irving from the Brooklyn Nets. The move is now official. Are the Nets, I mean, are the Mavs now better? Will, will, will they overtake the Grizzlies in the standing? I already know Joe doesn't think so. I'll let you know what I think coming up right here, right now on Locked on Grizzlies. You are Locked on Grizzlies, your daily Memphis Grizzlies podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everyone, and welcome back to Locked on Grizzlies. I am your co-host here, the Michael Cole, beat writer for the Commercial Appeal in Memphis, Tennessee, joined by the one and only. First of all, have you been checking out this man's Substacks article? So far, you've been coming with the heat, Joe Mullinax. I'm enjoying it myself. Joe, how you doing? I did have a successful Substack day on Monday. I, yeah. I finally got over 100 subscribers, so thank you to everybody checking out the Substack. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, it was a lot of fun. The trade primers, they always get people going to Michael. They always get the blood flowing. So over on yeah. Substack, uh, I also had a piece drop for SB Nation NBA on Monday. Obviously, our podcast here on Lockdown Grizzlies. I would never compare my workload to that of DeMichael Cole. He is far more talented, <laughs> far more hardworking, and far more handsome. We can all agree on that. But, uh, yeah, it's nice to be in the grind. I, I, I left GBB, and I'm glad I did. Parker's doing an awesome job, but yeah, I, yeah. I, I still – I still have the itch to do these things. So thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm convinced, Joe. You you just like to see me smile. You you like to, and I appreciate that. I, I like to see my partner smile as well. So uh, keep the compliments coming. And at the end of the day, Joe, it, you don't sell yourself short, man. You, I mean, you built GBB up now. I mean, you you put it in successful hands, and and now Parker's just had to take the baton and. And now he's running with it, but yeah, and he's running into the ground. Thanks a lot, Vox Media. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. I love Parker, uh, and I'm still getting paid by Vox, so I love you too, Vox. Um, shout out to you guys over at Vox Media. <laughs> this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies, our title sponsor today, is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code Locked On. That's PrizePicks.com promo code Locked On. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Also, check us out over on YouTube. Rate, review, subscribe, like, comment, all those fun things. Let's get right into it here. Uh, DeMichael Cole, I know that you know this, and I know that our dear listener, dear viewer, whoever is uh, watching or listening, they know this more than likely if they follow the NBA. Kyrie Irving is now a member of the Dallas Mavericks, and that yeah. is an interesting development for the Grizzlies' divisional foe. In the Mavericks, as much as the division matters anymore in the NBA, the Grizzlies still think it matters because we get uh, the Grizzlies got their first divisional banner, yeah, this past season. So it was a big shout, deal. It was a shout big out deal. to the, oh, I, I, no yeah. shame in my game. I'm, I'm all about it. Um, I am intrigued by this Mavericks acquisition yeah. largely because of what they gave up to Michael. Now, maybe I'm too much of a Spencer Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney Smith stand. Uh, but I think those are two pretty good contributors for Dallas, and they're gone. Two decent defenders who are pretty switchable, can do a lot of different things on the perimeter. They're gone. In their place is, I don't know who would argue with it, the best handles guard in the NBA. Sure. Uh, a very impressive shot maker. Good luck defending that backcourt back court of Luka and Kyrie. <laughs> yeah. But my concern, and I know we disagree a little bit on this, I think the Mavericks got worse because just as much as they're going to outscore people, which they're going to be able to physically do, because you got to remember Christian Wood, at least for now, is still on that Mavericks roster, and he's yeah. a scoring big. Yeah. Uh, who is going to stop anyone from scoring would be my question. And like, who's going to defend John Morant on the Dallas Mavericks now? Who's going to defend Desmond Bain? I'm not saying that Memphis could potentially hang in a shootout, in terms of offensive firepower, especially in the half court. Obviously, the Mavericks' half court offense should be fantastic now with Kyrie and Luka in the fold. And then you got Reggie Bullock and you've got uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., yep. Christian Wood. Again, theoretically, that's a phenomenal offensive five. But 
I'm worried about the defense, and that is why I am not sweating this Mavericks move as much. You know, it'll be interesting to watch how Kyrie's personality meshes. I know the GM in Dallas, obviously Coach Kidd or Jason Kidd, the coach there, they have a relationship with Kyrie, so there's hope that it's going to work out. But Kyrie has burnt just about every organization he's ever been a part with, a part of to the ground, except for the one that he was on the team with LeBron James. So I'm kind of interested to see how this plays out. I'm not as bullish on it. Uh, I think it's it's going to be a, a a bit of a struggle for the Mavs. I think it's a net move, uh, pun intended there. Ah, uh, I, think, I see what you did there. It's, it's, it's a net move, you know. Uh, it doesn't make them much better, but I don't think they get worse. I think it makes the Nets better. Quick side note. I think it makes the Nets better. I, I, I do not think that. Uh, Ooh, they, they can trot out six, six and above lineups now. How are you going to score yeah, on the Nets? Yeah, that's that that's nice. But you, you also load up on Kevin Durant and make the other guys yeah, score. And Dinwiddie and, can score. He, he can score. He can score. But but if, if, if I get beat by Spencer Dinwiddie, I'm living with it. I can't sleep at night knowing that Kyrie Irving or, or Kevin Durant score 40 on me, and it's nothing I can do about it. Uh, but with that being said, uh, I, I get what you're saying. Overall, if you look at how the Grizzlies have, have struggled against this team, uh, it's been because of their size in mm-hmm. ways. Uh, the the Mavs have have been a tough opponent against the Grizzlies because they have they have that size, and and not only do they have the size, uh, they're tough to guard with with Luca in in the spacing and the shooters around him. Uh, just going back to the last couple of seasons right they've only played one time this year Grizzlies lost 137 96 remember that game early in the season uh Dylan yeah. Brooks didn't play and everyone was like oh we need Dylan Brooks actually we missed this defense against Luca and it was like oh duh but anyways uh and then last season lost the last three so current four game losing streak against the Mavs overall but lost the last three three out of four last season uh 2020 21 lost two out of three and then 2019, 22, 2020, lost two out of three. It's been since the 2018, 2019 season since the Grizzlies had a winning record against the Mavs in a regular season. And I think this helps the Grizzlies' chances against the Mavs. I don't think this makes the Mavs worse by any chances. But uh, it's it's kind of a, a two-way street here because Reggie Bullock, by the way, I think is a really good defender. Uh, if you remember – uh, those two series that the Mavs won were primarily because they had Finney Smith and Reggie Bullock to kind of throw at those guys, you know, to throw at the backcourt of the Suns, to throw at the backcourt, you know, the Jazz. They could throw both guys at them and, uh, you know, kind of uh, mix it up like that. And that's what they, they could do then, but they can't do that now. No, now it's, it's just Reggie Bullock, please. Because if you can't do it, if you can't guard, you know, uh, Ja Morant, then did we lose? It's it's simple. It, but it used to be all right, Finney Smith, you go get him now. Switch off of him. Switch those two. You got him this time. Can't do that anymore. Uh, but to the other side, uh, teams load up against Luca. Good luck. Now you play four on three with Kyrie, uh, four guys plus Kyrie against three defenders. Uh, teams don't want to do that. Uh, so it's it's tough pickings either way. I think overall they're probably a slightly better team. Uh, it's still going to be a tough matchup. But the Grizzlies, I trust their defense uh, at full health. And I think uh, offensively, this helps Memphis out in terms of you needed two defenders like that against this team, I think. Uh, you, you don't want to put all the pressure on a guy like Reggie Bullock to guard John Morant. It's, it's, it's not, I think, a, a suitable way to defend him because we know Luka isn't doing it. And Ja, I, I mean – Kyrie, I think, is actually an underrated defender, very good positional defender, but Ja can elevate over anybody, and uh, it's it's lights out then. Kyrie is an underrated defender. You don't win. You don't win championships. There's, you don't there's win lots of it's been a ghost. There's lots of jokes that could be made in that instance, but I'm going to avoid <laughs> it because I like my job here as a member of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'll stay away from that uh, brush fire, so to speak, and casually remind everyone that the Memphis Grizzlies, who have not been able to practice consistently due to weather in Memphis, their crazy schedule, they got another practice in on Monday. Thank goodness they need it, as Grizzlies fans know, having watched this team. 
DeMichael's going to give us some intel from practice, talk about how things went, who we spoke to, who we saw on the floor. I think I saw a big Kiwi back in a Grizzlies practice uniform. I know they're still a ways away, and I know DeMichael will give us some information on that next year on Lockdown Grizzlies. But first, this episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by Built Bar. I'm telling you right now, the Coconut Almond Built Bar is a delicious treat without all the fat and calories. How do I know? I ate it myself to Michael. You got to try a Built Bar. We just got past the holidays, right? It's February now. I'm trying to get into shape. I'm trying to get felt and handsome and sexy like to Michael. I got to eat healthier. I got to help myself. And Built Bar is going to help me get there because healthy is actually tasty. 100% real chocolate Built Bars real chocolate. They come in flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond. I'm not sure how they do it, but these things taste like candy while maintaining the healthy benefits. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 17 grams of protein. And you don't have to get them at Built.com anymore. You should go to the website. It's phenomenal. Check out Built.com. But if you want to go in person, you say, I need a Built Bar now. Joe Mullinex told me I need to go do this. You can go to Sam's Club. You can go to Walmart. You can get the brownie batter, the churro, cookies and cream, double chocolate, coconut puffs. And if you're lucky enough to find a coconut almond, I will tell you right now that you will be the happiest Built oh. Bar customer oh. on your coast, on your Midwest, on your wherever you are in the United States. Maybe you're even in New Zealand and you're hoping to find a Built Bar. I don't know if they have Sam's Club or Walmart in New Zealand, but I do know that I had Built Bar and you can too. Go to Built.com, go to Sam's Club, go to Walmart. It's delicious. Shout out to Built Bar. We will talk Grizzlies practice. Some uh, some information coming out of that event next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies. I am one of your hosts, Joe Monax, joined by my co-host, the remarkable DeMichael Cole of the Commercial Appeal there in Memphis, Grizzlies beat writer. And before we get into this next part of our show, I do want to remind everybody, in case you forgot, that the NBA trade deadline is approaching. Uh, yeah. Locked On has you covered. I know DeMichael is going to be fairly busy on trade deadline day, uh, regardless of what the Grizzlies do. So I'm going to represent Locked On Grizzlies in the Locked On NBA YouTube channel. If necessary, if the Grizzlies make a deal, I'll pop over there. I'll say hello. I'll show off my less attractive face. And I'll talk about how this impactful, impactful move, if it occurs, changes the Grizzlies NBA season. Who becomes contenders? Who's tanking for a better future? Subscribe to the Locked On NBA YouTube channel. Don't miss a deal. And potentially hang out with me for a little bit on trade deadline day. Uh, we are still 48 hours, a little more than 48 hours, depending on when folks are watching this episode, two days away from the trade deadline. I believe it's 4 p.m. on the East Coast on Thursday, so 3 p.m. Central. And the team had a practice on Monday, and it's probably a little too early to ask those trade deadline questions. I'm guessing that they might, and we can talk more about this later, it would make sense for them to practice Wednesday and then not practice Thursday so that they don't have to deal with trade deadline questions uh, at a media session. But th that's another basket of eggs. Um, you were there on Monday, the vibe of the team. They've lost eight of their last nine. They welcome Chicago into town. Ironically, the Raptors have OG and an OB currently sitting out due to a wrist injury. Um, OG, the, one of the main subjects of trade conversation across the league. Alex Caruso is a target that I, you, uh, Matt Hardlicka, who, who I respect his work a good bit going back to our GBB days. Several folks have kind of circled Caruso as a, a, a cool target if the Grizzlies were interested. Uh, he'll be in town uh, in the game tonight against the Bulls, which we'll talk more about here in a moment. But what was the general vibe of this Grizzlies team? You know, the John Morant controversies. We talked about the team having to grow up a little bit on yesterday's show. Um, I know you didn't get a chance to talk to Ja, but what are some of the overall feelings and vibes coming out of practice on Monday? Yeah, Ja was at practice, wasn't made available uh, to us as well. So we, we should be able to speak to him today you know, at some point because he's not on the injury report, so he's expected to play. Uh, you mm -hmm. mentioned Steven Adams earlier, saw him at practice, uh, wasn't doing much, just some free throw shooting, some light things, not moving around, you know, too much. But 
he, you know, the latest update from Taylor Jenkins is basically that he hasn't done too much. Uh, he's still still in the one on old phase right now. So a lot of individual activity stuff. If you remember, uh, we went through this, you know, time and time again with different Grizzly players. You know, they'll move up to one on one, three on three, five on five, and five on five usually means they're getting very close to playing. They get past that contact phase and then they're ready to go. So he's still in one on old. So still a little bit of a ways away for Steven Adams, but first time uh, outside of when he was ill for a little bit earlier this season, uh, Zion Williams was not at practice, mm. and it was because he was sent down to South Haven, uh, down I-55, Joe, to go to the G League hustle, and and we've seen a lot of guys get sent down, right? Xavier Tillman, yeah, uh, Jake Laravia, David Friday at different points, Kennedy Chandler, Vince Williams, Kenneth Lofton Jr., but it was different this time, Joe. It was different because this guy's a top 10 pick two mm-hmm. drafts ago. If you look in front of him in that draft, uh, Joe, I don't, I don't have to pull it up for you. But you got, uh, I mean, the names in front of him in that draft. Let's just say none of those guys are anywhere close uh, to going to the G League. So uh, it's it's notable for sure. And, and talking to Taylor Jenkins, what he said is basically, in short, this is all about development because the fact that right now, uh, as we talked about on the last episode, his minutes are diminishing. Uh, he's played 11 minutes, seven minutes last couple games. I think it was 11 and four minutes. But the thing is, he's not getting regular rotation minutes. He's not the first wing off the bench anymore. He's not the second wing off the bench because John Conchar and Danny Green have both jumped in front of him and David Roddy is playing in mm-hmm. front of him right now. So with that being said, He's so far down on the depth chart that instead of just letting him sit on the bench and say, oh, go play four minutes here. This guy's in foul trouble. Go get a couple minutes and come back. They want him to play 30 minutes down there with the hustle, get a lot of playing time in, and see what he can do with that job. We were talking a little bit before we started recording, and obviously the trade deadline is coming. Uh, The next episode of Locked on Grizzlies, you'll be flying solo because it'll be a later night after the Chicago Bulls game, and I'm an old man and I'm tired, so – that's uh, that's Wednesday's show. We'll be to Michael Solo. Obviously, we'll be together for the trade deadline uh, episode on Thursday. So anyway, um, I think that going into the trade deadline, and I wrote about this over on my you know red hot Substack, written in the dark. Uh, the the movement with Zaire, as we talked about on yesterday's episode, moving him down the rotation, now being in the G League, I think it makes a trade. Much Ooh. more likely. Oh, I do because, and it's not necessarily a trade of Zaire. I think he's on the table if somebody wants him, like at Detroit Pistons, Orlando Magic. Somebody yeah. just wants a young player that they don't care if he stinks in his minutes. They want him to develop um, at the NBA level. The Grizzlies obviously have a little bit more to lose in in that way right now. Um, yeah. But I think that they, as you and I have talked about here, they are in everywhere. Zaire was supposed to be the sixth man. He was supposed to be the dude. Guy, he's supposed to be the future guy. starter. He's right. supposed to be the, oh, we don't mind losing Dylan this year because we have Zaire stepping in. No one, well, I'm not going to say no one, but that's not the general feeling uh, no. anymore, Joe. Yeah, so I, I think that the biggest thing for me is they see that because they're not blind or yeah. they're not, you know, uh, incapable of understanding basketball maybe is the better way to describe that. Um I could see them making a trade just to try to fill in that void because Tyus and Brandon Clark isn't enough. And no disrespect to Danny Green, who did make a couple of threes in his last game. No disrespect to John Conchar. I'm not comfortable with either of those guys at this stage being an eighth man going into a playoff series. So they have to find an upgrade there, and I think they do that through the trade deadline over these next couple of days. Yeah, uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Uh we both said it in a recent episode here on Locked on Chris is that we don't think this team should make a move. But I've also said time and time again that Zaire Williams is is a direct tie-in to the Grizzlies' future as much as anyone. Um, but you wouldn't I mean, be able to tell from the way they utilize him. No, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's mind-blowing at times. Uh, mm-hmm. We talk about how great of a mid-range shooter he is, 
but you basically see him take spot up three pointers. This guy wasn't even a great three point shooter in high school when he became a five star recruit, one of the top mm-hmm. players in the nation. It wasn't because he was shooting forty percent from three point range. He also didn't do that at Stanford. That's not what made him a top ten pick in the NBA draft. It's all the other things that he's really good at. But with all that being said, uh, Joe, I agree. But the fact that Zaire, who's the guy who's extremely talented, I think we said it at one point uh, when we were talking about the bench, the most talented guy coming off the bench in terms of having, you know, the tools. I mean, Basanti's looking like he's trying to take the baton, you know, in, in, in that realm right now. But but anyways, we were saying, we were talking about how talented he is, but it was about putting it together. And the fact that the Grizzlies are sending him down and all these other guys who, uh, I mean, from being just quite frankly honest, is, hey, you have limited upside. You know, Danny Green's not going to turn into some guy that's going to average 20 points per game. And so, neither is John Contra. And John Contra is not even going to shoot enough to average 20, <laughs> uh, as Joe would say. So uh, with that being said, uh, your upside guy is Zaire, and he's not, you know, displaying that, you know, at the moment. So uh, I think this kind of opens the door because that's the that's the position for me, Joe. If you look at the point guards, all you got to do is break them down position by position. You look at the point guards, you got Jai and Tyus. Uh, why would you add anything there? If you look at the power forwards, you can make an argument that Jaron and Santi are turning into probably one of the top power forward duos, mm-hmm. like to go from that guy to that guy. And then at center, uh, Stephen Adams and Brandon Clark. And you might as well throw X in there with the way he's played lately. Uh, that's a nice trio. Joe, he's had at least four offensive rebounds in four of the last five games. Don't you do that. It's because they miss a lot of shots to Michael. (laughs) That's that's, that's what Steven Adams usually (laughs) says. That's exactly why. But the guy is playing with a lot of effort. I appreciate it. You appreciate it. You're a coach. You're a coach. You appreciate effort. And he's he's showing more effort than a lot of those other guys. But with that being said, uh, that's why I feel like, the only position where there's that uncertainty is on the wing, which opens the door for that trade. You cut to the core of me, to Michael Cole. You do. <laughs> you know how I love effort. You're exactly right. A shout out to X. Shout out. I apologize. I apologize, Adrian Tillman. If you're listening to this, good job. I had to deep, having... deep inside of your coaching. Yeah, your, your you coaching did. That background. He, he's, he's pretty good uh, right now in this particular moment. Good job, X. We'll talk about Grizzlies Bulls next here on Locked on Grizzlies. But first... This episode of Lockdown Grizzlies is brought to you by Prize Picks. I haven't looked at the line yet for tonight's game yeah. uh, in terms of John Morant's more than or less than points over at Prize Picks. I would say that Ja's going to score more than whatever the list is, given all of the craziness going on. One of the great ways to turn the tide on a story, I know you know this to Michael, yeah. is to drop like a 50 burger or something. So I'm going to go more than on Ja's points, and you probably should too if you play Prize Picks. I love how easy it is. And I love how it's me against projections, not me against people over at Price Picks. You can win up to 25 times your money on any given entry. The NBA is available there, obviously. The Super Bowl is coming up. You can play the NFL. Major League Baseball season is about to start. Hockey, all the way through disc golf and cricket. You can literally find everything over at Price Picks. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. Safe and fast withdrawals are possible. And they are currently operational in over 30 states as well as in Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code LOCKED ON. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code LOCKED ON at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Can the Grizzlies get off the snide or at least start to? When you lose eight of your last nine, one game's not going to do it. But can they start that process tonight against the Chicago Bulls at home? We'll talk about that next here on Lockdown Grizzlies. Welcome back to Lockdown Grizzlies. Closing out our Tuesday episode, the wonderful, the handsome, the charming, DeMichael Cole of the commercial appeal there in Memphis, Memphis Grizzlies beat writer. Uh, the rose of this program joined by the thorn, which would be me, uh, <laughs> Joe Monax, uh, pleased to just be the thorn to DeMichael's rose. And DeMichael, it's been a really rough, uh, I guess, 96 hours now for the Memphis yeah. Grizzlies. Probably the, the worst run that Memphis has had, even not even including on the court stuff, off the court issues, the athletic story about Ja. Dylan Brooks getting suspended, 
There's so much going on right now that has the Grizzlies at their lowest point of the John Morant era. How do they get themselves up out of the muck and start the process of getting back into the light? There's a saying that winning cures everything. And that's not always true, but in professional sports, it's pretty close to true. So how does Memphis start winning again, starting with a game against a Chicago Bulls team that doesn't look that good in terms of their record, but they can play with anybody on any given, any given night, given their talent. They've beaten a lot of the best teams mm-hmm. in the Eastern Conference, and it's no fluke. DeMar DeRozan is an all-star. Right. Zach, Zach Levine you know, is, is still one of the, I'd say, top 10 shooting guards uh, in the NBA right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, uh, Vucevic, super skilled, big man. And, and those three guys, you know, a nice, nice core of players. Uh, there when when healthy, but Joe, you talked about it when you were talking about prize picks. This is a John Morant game. Yeah, time for him to cook. This is this is a John Morant game all all, all the way. Uh, Vucevic is is not known as a shot blocker. That's 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 not he, he is actually known as the opposite. He's known for having slow feet, and mm-hmm. he doesn't relatively get off the ground fast. Uh, I don't think there's a point guard in the NBA. You'd say, "Oh, that's 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 the perfect more a more perfect matchup for than a guy like John Morant, who not only is quick side to side with his dribble, but he's quick going straight at you as well and right. leaping above you. Uh, he should get a lot of good shots at the rim. If he doesn't get a lot of shots, good shots at the rim, that's because the defense will be crowding him in the paint. And we've seen the way Desmond Bain has shot the ball lately." Desmond Bain, I mean, between the Cleveland game, I mean, he, he, he's he been shooting the ball really, really well. The Cleveland and the Toronto game both shot it really well. Uh, Desmond Bain shooting the basketball well. Danny Green, I think, you know, I think this guy, is, as he gets more reps, Joe, I'm just going off of what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm There are no red flags popping up to me. All I've One. seen is, is a guy who, you know, is still readjusting to the speed, as he's talked about. Right. And you can tell. The most obvious sign that he's adjusting to the speed is uh, we've seen a couple times when he tries to get a shot up, the defenders are right in his face. So you think in his mind, he's thinking, oh, I had more time, you know, to get a shot up. It's it's basically closeouts, you know. Uh, when you're practicing, guys aren't closing out that hard because they're on, they're your teammates. They don't want to hurt you. But um, this is this is the league. These guys are closing out hard because they don't want to get called out on film. And Danny Green's kind of getting readjusted to that. And, you know, he's not worried. He, he he told me that he's at about eighty percent, Joe. So he's at about eighty percent. So if you get him, you know, closer to ninety, closer to hundred, I think uh, you have a, a more than capable three point option there. But with that being said, I think this is the type of game that kind of is tailored toward the Grizzly style. Top paints in the points in the paint uh, scoring team. Uh, you know, the Bulls have some good defenders. You know, I like Patrick Williams. You know what he brings to the table. Alex Caruso, who we've mentioned earlier, a very solid defender as well. But uh, even Ayo, Ayo Desumu, uh Illinois guy, uh, another really good guard defender. But with all that being said, uh, when Ja gets that screen from Xavier Tillman, who's actually been a pretty solid screen setter so far. He was ta- mm-hmm. I was talking to him the other day. He was telling me how much you know of an emphasis that is for him, Joe. Uh, and he gets that screen from X, and he gets his head downhill. I don't think there's anything down there that can stop him. So it's going to be more about, you know, the Grizzlies, I guess, how they play in the closing minutes. That's what it's been about these last few games. But this is the type of matchup where they should get back in the win column. The only thing that concerns me slightly, yeah. uh, and obviously with a team that's lost eight of their last nine, a lot should concern you. The Bulls blew out the Spurs on yeah. Monday night. This is supposed to be the second game of a back-to-back for Chicago, and obviously travel and all that stuff, that will still be a real thing for the Bulls. But only DeRozan played a serious amount of minutes against San Antonio at 34 minutes. Williams, who you mentioned a moment ago, played 18. Vucevic only played 24. Levine only played 31. So they didn't have to log a ton of minutes with these guys. Another thing that slightly concerns me, DeMichael, and obviously it will depend on you know, injury reports and all those things. Our boy Caruso didn't play against the Spurs uh, due to an injury. We'll see if he's on the injury report for Memphis tomorrow. 
I don't know if you know this or not. Well, that's not true. I do know that you know this. But dear listener, <laughs> dear dear viewer, um, the Grizzlies don't have Steven Adams right now. I would argue that the guy that is best at Steve, being Steven Adams that is not Steven Adams is Andre Drummond. And look at this Ooh. line that he posted against the Spurs. 21 points on 9 of 9 shooting, 15 rebounds, 3 steals, 1 block, 21 minutes of play. That's all he needs, 21 minutes. So I'm mildly concerned about what Brandon Clark and Santi Aldama, assuming Santi doesn't start at the three, you know, however that front court rotation plays out, I think Drummond, you're exactly right about Vucevic. That's not his strength. He's the offensive firepower. Drummond is, uh, again, if there's a guy doing Stephen Adams things that isn't named Stephen Adams, <laughs> it's Drummond. And I, I'm mildly concerned about how the Grizzlies are going to handle those minutes going at that guy. And maybe, you know, we've been talking about wings this whole time to Michael. If Memphis is concerned about their front court, maybe Andre Drummond is a Grizzly in a few days. Sounds good in theory, but in it would, theory, it, 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 would, <laughs> it would look bad if you if you just – Signed Stephen Adams to an extension. Brandon Clark just got an extension. And you want to talk about two guys that can't play together. Drummond oh, and Adams oh. cannot play oh, together. Oh, it's, it's, oh, my goodness. I, can you imagine? That That wouldn't even – a lot of different pairings would work. A lot of pairings would work in the 70s and 80s. That's one that wouldn't even work oh, back then. Man. Oh, my goodness. No, but, but uh, yeah, a lot of – I think, you know, it, it sounds good in theory. But, but yeah, he's, he's a tough matchup at the end of the day. And right now with the way – you know, the Grizzlies are deploying their big men. It's it's kind of a concern when they have to go against those two two big men, you know, that big. You know, Vucevic, uh, this is a game that we talked about. Xavier Tillman's probably going to get the start because he matches up better against those bigger, brillier centers, you know, in mm -hmm. the NBA. This is another one of those guys. A lot of teams usually have, you know, smaller secondary centers coming off the bench, guys who are rim runners coming in to catch lobs and run the floor. But that's not as necessarily Andre Drummond, another no. big guy who's known just for getting guys out of the way, uh, a rebounded monster. And Brandon Clark is going to have his hands full. So interesting matchup all around. You made some good points there. I think Ja can get downhill, get to the rim. Uh, Desmond Bain, you know, as well. But DeMar DeRozan is a cook, man. I mean, uh, it, it, between Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan, uh, Dylan Brooks can only guard one. I'm pretty sure it's going to be an all-star. In and uh, Demar, so it'll be interesting to see how the Grizzlies hold up against Zach Levine as well. Yeah, Levine being guarded by Bain will be interesting to see play out, assuming that's the matchup. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting game to check out. Looking forward to it. I know DeMichael will be there in FedEx form covering for the commercial appeal and to a lesser extent for Lockdown Grizzlies. Thanks for making Lockdown Grizzlies your first listen today. Now make your second listen game to game NBA. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Next time Locked On Grizzlies comes on our Wednesday show, DeMichael will be flying solo because I'm an old washed man, and DeMichael is going to be able to get the uh, episode up on Wednesday. He'll be talking about the game, of course, and maybe – the Grizzlies are involved in rumors by that point. Memphis, yeah. aside from uh, a dabble here or there, has not really been in the trade conversations. So maybe uh, we start getting some things heating up as Memphis clears their game schedules. They won't play again until after the deadline. Yeah, it, it, it's an interesting time. You know, I, I, I really question what this team will look like a week from now. A lot of questions will need to be answered in that time and like you said winning cures all they need to win if they you know want some of these questions to be answered you know there's the stephen adams question there's the you know questions about you know as we just mentioned the backup wings right and there's the questions about the bench there's the question now you know about the second big man xavier mm -hmm. tillman if we're just being quite frankly just being honest xavier tillman has outplayed brandon clark as of late and that's why Brandon Clark's minutes have kind of diminished. So uh, a lot of unanswered questions that will be answered in the next week or so, Joe. It's going to be interesting to see. I'm looking forward to your show on Wednesday. We'll be together for a trade deadline preview on Thursday. And then, of course, Friday, it'll be a trade deadline review here on Lockdown Grizzly. So a jam-packed week as part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Hopefully you stick with us 
as we work through it together. Thank you so much for listening, for re- or for commenting, for liking, for subscribing, for rating, reviewing. It's all good. It's all appreciated. We hope you stick with us, like I said, as we continue to grind through this NBA season, covering the beloved, at least in Memphis, maybe not in the rest of America right now, but the beloved uh, in Memphis, Memphis Grizzlies. For DeMichael Cole, my wonderful co-host, I'm Joe Molinax. Until next time, stay locked in. This is Locked on Grizzlies.